Hello friends, how are you? I welcome all of you at an academy and in this particular lesson I am going to teach you about major abiotic factors and responses to abiotic factors. Friends, here you can see some information about me and you can follow me at this Gmail link below for more further updates. Now let's begin with a question because I think the question answer format is the best way to remember and understand the things. So what is the question? What are the key elements that lead to so much variation in physical and chemical condition of different habitats? Majorly, there are two kinds of elements that is abiotic elements or biotic elements. In biotic elements, we have pathogens, parasites, predators and competitors. But in abiotic component, we have four major abiotic factors that is temperature, water, light and soil. Although there are few more, but we are restricted to dealing with uh, these four only because these four are the major major abiotic factors okay now let's begin with the temperature the temperature is the most ecological relevant environmental factor because it controls the enzymes of activity and their kinetics and the basal metabolic rate whenever we are talking about temperature there are two kinds of organism that is urethermal and stenothermal Urethermal organism is that kind of organism which can tolerate wide range of temperature and the stenothermal organism is which can, that kind of organism which are restricted to narrow range of temperature and they cannot survive in a wide range of temperature. Okay. Now we have water. It is the second most essential environmental factor and it is very very essential for growth. In fact the life on earth originated in water. Now there is a misconception or myth about the aquatic organism they don't have any water related problem but, but this is very very wrong. Why? Because the chemical composition and the pH value of water is very very important for aquatic organism. Uh, why? Because the slight difference in the yeah, slight compositional change in the chemical composition and the pH value of water become very very disastrous for aquatic organism. Now whenever we are talking about water, so on the basis of salinity, because in case of inland water we have salinity up to 5 ppt, in the case of sea water we have salinity approx 35 ppt and in case of hydrothermal vent we have salinity more than 100 ppt. Now you can understand the amount of salinity which varies according to place to place. And due to this, we can classify the organism on the basis of salinity in two categories that is urihaline and stenohaline. In urihaline, we have organism which can tolerate and thrive in very wide range of salinity. And in stenohaline, we have that kind of organism which are restricted to a narrow range of salinity. Now friends, we have light. Light is the third most important environmental factor. Now. It is very very responsible for photosynthesis and photosynthesis is the primary source of energy in our food system. Okay. Now we the sun is the single source of energy in our ecosystem and the spectral quality of solar radiation is also important for life. You have to answer a question why red algae have been found living in deepest water. Okay. That is more than 500 feet in the view of this statement. I am waiting for your answer. Now we have soil. There is a word that is called edaphic which is related to soil. Okay. Edaphic means anything related to soil. Now this is the, the th thing about soil is that the nature and property of soil is depend upon the climate, weathering process and the development of soil. And the vegetation in area, in area can be determined by a large extent of the characteristics of soil that is soil composition its grain size, its pH value, its mineral composition and its topography. Now you can understand the importance of soil and the importance of soil uh, means in, the, in any vegetative state or in any vegetative area. Okay. Now what is the responses of, of organism to their abiotic, to these abiotic factors? There are five kind of responses that is regulator, partial regulator, conformer, migration and the suspension lastly. Okay. In case of regulator, the internal level of organism is not changing according to their external level. You can take an example of human. 
our internal level temperature is still means uh, uh, still at 97 or 98 degree Fahrenheit in summer and in winter also. In case of partial regulator, we can see these organism is changing their internal level as per their external level as per their changing external level up to a threshold limit and after that they are not able to change further more their internal level according to their external level. You can take some or marine organism in this category because they can tolerate or they can change their internal level as per the changing in the slight difference in salinity but up after a threshold limit they cannot change their means internal level okay and they have to suffer badly. Now the, we have thirdly conformer. These are the that kind of organism in which the internal level is very much changing according to their external level. And the, and the conformer's body temperature is changing along with their environment. Now the most important thing is that these things means the adaptability like conformers is developed only in that case where the environmental range is maximum. If the environmental range is not means maximum, then the organism opt to migrate. And in the case of migration, we can see the Siberian crane is migrated, is comes in the Kevla Dev National Park in Bharatpur in cold, and after the end of the winter season, they go, they 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 return to their natural habitat. Now, in case of suspension, we, we will see the four, three or four examples, interesting examples and understand what is the suspension. Suspension is the actually a process in which the organism tends to means delay the extreme stressful period. And after those period, after delaying those period, avoiding those period, they return in their natural habitat with natural behavior. Now, let's see the first example of a beer. In beer, beer during winter goes in the process of hibernation, okay, and save himself from the uh, means of hunger. Now, in case of a snail fish, a snail and fish during summer they goes in the case of estivation, okay. In case of zooplankton, we can go, we can see, sorry, ki, uh, they they go in in a stage of suspended development that is called dipause, and the most common example the seed that goes or uh, that reduce their metabolic activity and that stage is called dormancy. In the case of dormancy you can see suppose take an example of wheat seed. When the wheat seed is packed in a gunny they are not means uh, sprouted but in favorable condition when they are sown in the field they means uh, they, they uh, uh, sprouted. Now I think you you understand the major four abiotic factors and the responses to abiotic factors. If yes, then please uh, rate, review, and recommend these lessons, guys, because it is taking a lot of effort to deliver these lessons up to you. Thank you.